So what if you were out on the golf course and you could shape the shot any way that you wanted? Well, that is what is gonna happen in today's video. Peter Finch here and you join me down at the beautiful Stockport Golf Club. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous morning here, completely still. There was a big storm last night. Everything is lush and green and I've had a brilliant coffee this morning. So I am jacked up. And what I'm going to do today is a four hole course vlog. And it's all about how you can adapt and shape shots when you're actually out here playing. So today's video is going to be made up of nine shots. I'm going to throw up here a wonderful tic-tac-toe or noughts and crosses board. And this is something that Tiger Woods uses in his practice all the time. He stands on the driving range and he tries to shape shots through these windows. Now the windows on the top, we've got high fade, high draw, and then a straight shot. The middle, we've got just like a normal draw, a normal straight, and then a normal fade. And then on the bottom, we've got a low draw, a low fade, and then a low stinger. God, I love stingers. And the goal of today's vlog is very simple, to play four holes once I use one of these shots. So let's say on this first tee shot, I hit a high draw, <laughs> maybe not quite likely with my game, that is crossed out and I can no longer use that for the remaining holes. And then what I'm gonna do is basically talk you through how to play every single one of these shots so when you are on the golf course, you can impress your friends and hopefully shoot lower scores. Wow, that was dramatic, cracky. So starting on the ninth hole here, it's a par five at 500 yards and I'm gonna be using my three wood for the first tee shot. And I'm gonna go for something nice and simple. I am gonna go for my Patented, 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 standard, normal, what I would play every day, high fade. Kind of suits it on this hole a little bit. I can aim at the left side and then let it drift. Now I'm gonna get into exactly how path and club face and angle of attack actually help shape shots, but this first shot, I'm just gonna hit because this is my normal thing. It's what I do every day. Just aiming at the left side of the fairway here. My normal path moves a little bit down to the left-hand side. My club face is just that slightly bit open at impact. And that means I can hit that lovely high fade. I maybe actually should have used one of the, the more difficult shots on this because I might need that later on. It'll be fine, it'll be fine. Now, before we delve too deeply into this shot shaping vlog, let's explain exactly how path, club face, angle of attack, they all affect shot shape. Because let's face it, you're gonna have to practice this a little bit on a driving range before you head straight out onto the golf course. Okay, let's see how we can alter ball flight and add curve. I'm gonna try and explain this quickly, succinctly, and simply. So the first thing to understand is that the club face has a dominant effect of where the ball is gonna finish. Therefore, this has to be the first and most important consideration to make. As you will see in a moment though, the club face does not have to be pointing at the target for the ball to end up there. It's the path that the club takes throughout impact combined with where the club face is pointing that will result in the overall shot pattern. Everything that we talk through today is based on the assumption that you're using an iron and that the strike is out the center of the club face. Remember with most woods, I mean, tailor-made are an example, which this might not be true, but most woods, if you hit out the toe or the heel, that will alter ball flight because of gear effect. Now, firstly, if you wanna hit a dead straight shot, which I would consider the hardest shot in golf, you're gonna need the club face aiming at the target through impact, but you're also gonna to have to have the club path traveling down towards the target at impact as well. Now, this is exceptionally difficult to do, and this is why you see most of the top players favor one type of shot, either left to right or right to left. For a right-hander, and if you're a left-hander, you can just flip this round, to fade the golf ball, you're gonna need the path to travel left of the target line at the point of impact, with the club face open to that path but remaining close to the target. If your path moves left and your club face points at the target or to the right of the target, the spin axis is gonna be tilted a little bit too much and the ball is gonna to finish to the right of your target. If you want to draw the ball, the path is gonna to have to move right of the target line at impact with the club face close to that path but remaining open to the target. Again, if that club face points at the target or to the left, the ball is gonna be tilted a little bit too much in its spin axis and finish left of the target. Now to add in more draw or fade, you simply need to make those differences bigger. So swing more left 
with a slightly more open club face to your path, or you swing more right with a slightly more close club face to your path. Now, angle of attack is also something that can affect path or swing direction. All things being equal, if you hit down on the golf ball, the club is gonna be traveling a little bit more to the right at impact. And if you're hitting up, the club is gonna be traveling a little bit more off to the left-hand side. So that is something to bear in mind. And it's also why you see so many straight golf shots actually have a divot that is going slightly left after the ball. Another factor that can affect ball flight is dynamic lie. So if the toe is a little bit too much in the air, the face will actually be pointing a little bit to the left. And if the heel is in the air, the face is actually going to be pointing a little bit more off to the right hand side. This is face plane tilt. It's to do with loft. So on the left hand side of the fairway, didn't quite cut back as much as I would have wanted. And there's also a ridge here that if it had kicked off, it would have been perfect. However, my next shot into this par five, I am going to hit a low stinging draw. Now, hopefully that explanation of how you manipulate path and face and angle of attack to actually affect shots will give you a better understanding, but I'm still gonna talk you through the shots as I go. On this one, the ball position is gonna be further back. I'm gonna strengthen my grip, so I'm gonna close the club face and then take my grip. I'm gonna aim my body to the right of where I want the ball to finish, and then I'm just gonna try and hit down. I'm not gonna try and manipulate the face other than that. The only other thing to remember is that as you hit down, the path moves further off to the right-hand side. So I won't be aiming quite as right as you may think. Go on there. Oh, just cleared the top of that bunker. Oh, that could have been so good. Oh, that wasn't too bad. So you see the bit of rainwater from last night. It's actually just pitched kind of here, but that's the advantage of having a low running shot. It took that bank all the way down and it's finished up on the green. Chance for an eagle, hello. Eagle, 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 eagle. The greens look absolutely amazing. Oh. Got too excited, I'm sorry. Way too excited. Listen, it's not a putting video. So I'm actually gonna try and be a little bit more tactical about this hole. The remaining holes that I've got to play, this is the only one that really favors a draw off the tee shot. So I'm gonna try and cross that high draw off the list now. So I know my target, got my aim line. That's what I'm gonna be adjusting my body around. A little bit of a stronger grip, ball position that little bit further forward, and then just trust the swing. Oh, I just overcooked it. It's a high draw, but it's too far left. I hit a tree. I don't know where it's finished after that. This could be a bit of a problem because I've already used my low draw. Ah, oh, that was an error. That was a little bit annoying. I think I just tried to help it that little bit right at the end with the hands and just flipped it over. Oh man, it's tough, it's tough. So I got lucky, I smacked into this tree. Came out to here. Now, fortunately, I thought I was gonna be a little bit more that way. So I'd have to play a little bit of a draw, which I don't have in the bag. But from here, I can actually play a little bit of a normal high shot. And I think the pin is back right as well. Oh, wind. Whoa, massive. <laughs> that was different. Oh my God, the greens look amazing. So good. Can't help but feel confident, honestly, to be honest. Well, a par. Now I've got a quick and simple way that you can actually work on altering your path and your face direction on the range. So yes, this is about shot shaping on the golf course, but if you wanna really get to grips with how you can alter path and face and all the rest of it on a driving range, on a practice range, that is where you need to put in the work. So what I've done here is I've got my little target line via an alignment stick, and then I've got two clubs which are laid down on the ground. Now, I would suggest using alignment sticks for this. It's almost certain that I did not forget mine and left them at home, which is why I've got to use these golf clubs. Or maybe it is, who cares? So this is gonna be the straight shot. So get yourself set up. You can see there that these two clubs are pointing in parallel lines either side of the target line. And all I'm gonna do is just take a half swing, try and get the club moving straight into the back of the ball, try and get the club face lined up to my alignment stick here as I swing through. And that should, it should produce a straight shot. Like I said, only a little half swing to begin with. 
and that is pretty, well, that's not pretty straight, that is straight. That is as straight as an arrow. A frozen rope, an Arizona highway, you get what I mean. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna alter these two golf clubs so they're pointing to the left of my target line. And I'm gonna adjust my aim to match. So this is now aiming to the left of my target line. And all I wanna be doing here is getting the club face slightly open to where these two clubs are aiming, but still closed to that target line. Now what this should allow me to do is if I just swing along there, is get the feeling of that club face opening and then trying to curve the ball back to target. And you'll never guess what's coming next. That's right, ladies and gents, I've altered my swing path alignment so it is now pointing pretty much at the camera. I'm gonna close the club face very slightly at address now. This is something I should have mentioned last time. If you can open or close the club face at address and then adjust your grip, that's the easiest way of actually controlling that club face position. So I'm gonna grip the club slightly stronger, so it's pointing a little bit more left at address than it normally would do. See, I'm that confident, I'm not even gonna look. I'm gonna look at the camera. I'm not, I'm not really. So swing along that path line, club slightly close to that path, and try and get it drawing. That's actually pretty decent. So there you go, a quick way of practicing on the driving range and actually trying to feel the differences between path and face and then a direct correlation to ball flight. Now, let's get back to the golf course and have some fun. Just drifting a little bit right, spin left. Might just be off. Actually a little bit downwind this off. That tee shot there was low, it was straight. And the key for that shot, you just gotta aim your body a little bit further left than you think. Because remember, as you hit down, your swing direction is gonna travel a little bit more right. So you need to straighten that out by aiming that little bit more off to the left. But with this driver off the deck here, we are gonna be going for that low fade. We're gonna aim the body off to the left. I'm just gonna to swing to the left and just allow it to be squeezed out. Oh, this could be good. Ball position slightly further back that I normally would have to drive it pretty much at a two iron distance, gripping down that shaft just a touch. And I've hit it straight into the trees. And it's come out to the middle of the fairway. Perfect way to lay up. Thank you, thank you very much. Listen, I'm not saying it's gonna always go to plan. That's not what golf's about. But what this does, it just provides that little bit of artistry into your game. And it's a great little exercise to use on the course, on the driving range. You're just trying to free your mind up rather than thinking about, you know, all the different intricacies of the swing. This frees your mind up to simply think about path, angle of attack, where the face is aiming, and ultimately target. There's so many golfers who go out to the golf course and don't think about the target. It's a target game. Now listen, I'm not saying that that was a perfect layup, but you know, it was a perfect layup. <laughs> 110 yards left in, and I'm just gonna hit a nice little draw. Using my pitching wedge, strengthening my grip very slightly, aiming tiny bit right to my target, not much because remember hitting down, I'm gonna get that club traveling a little bit more right anyway. Just try and get it beyond the pin, spinning a little bit left. It's gonna be beautiful. So the only real shot to elude me there is a high, straight, normal one, which is probably the same for most golfers. But if I hold this one, there's gonna be a high-fiving, high-punching, excited me. <laughs> it's pretty straight. Oh, damn. Oh, no high-five. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that video on how to shape shots on the golf course. Like I said, you can practice this at our driving range as well, just trying to paint that noughts and crosses board in the sky. But try and play this game on the course as well, because it will indulge your creative side. It will get you thinking about shots in a, a different way, maybe get you to see your course in a different way as well. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, whack the like button as well. It will bring you good fortune and eternal good looks. Might not do, that's, a, that's actually a lie. You may be beautiful anyway, but you might not. <laughs> Listen, it's the way of the world. However, stop rambling. Big thank you to Stockport for having me down as well. The course here is in absolutely amazing condition. Those greens were beautiful.
absolutely beautiful. Stay tuned, loads more videos coming. Make sure you hit that bell icon while you're down there so you don't miss out on any notifications. I'll see you down here next time.